Hey, welcome to WorshipTutorials.com. Today you're hanging out with Brian and Bradford. All right. We have an amp review for you today. This is Bradford's. My Blues Junior. Fender Blues Junior. Yes. Now, uh, full disclosure, right off the top, this is a special edition Blues Junior. It's called the Humboldt Hot Rod. Mm -hmm. They are no longer available. They were through Pro Guitar Shop, right? They were. They did three or four iterations. It is I think three. Three. This First, is the second, right? This is the second. Okay, so Bradford, what are the main differences between this and just a stock? So if you look at the back of this thing, it says Blues Junior 3. It does. So this is a, basically a Blues Junior. Fender Limited Blues edition. Junior 3. Uh, but um, Pro Guitar Shop, along with Fender, made some adjustments to it. So what, what are the differences between this and a regular old Blues Junior? Three. Obvious, some cosmetic differences. Uh, the first one was forest green. This is a second run. It's wine red. The tubes, they, as far as I'm concerned, tubes are kind of like a snake oil thing. They were like, these these tubes came directly from the soft tech factory, factory. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? Like, yeah. So, still cool. Sounds great. Um, I put JJ's in since then because I needed new tubes. Everybody needs tubes, new tubes. Tubes are a fairly inexpensive and easy change to make. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you'd call an upgrade as a change. Speaker, uh, was Eminence, Cannabis Rex, it's a hemp speaker. That was on the, the uh, on this on the version. Humboldt. So that's an upgrade, yes. the Cannabis Rex speaker. Yes, on this okay. version. So the stock speaker on a Blues Junior 3 is an Eminence Lightning Bolt, and the Eminence, uh, or Eminence designed Cannabis Rex, or Hempster, that comes on the, the, the most recent version of the Humboldt, is like a little bit smoother. Yeah. It has a hemp cone, the the upgraded speaker does, a hemp cone, and the Cannabis Rex is not an expensive speaker no, to buy. No, you can definitely, you can so still it's, buy that it's a and mod put it in you could put on, easily. in your, a pretty un, inexpensive mod you could make in, in your Blues Junior if you have one. And it's just a little bit smoother. You can find Humboldt specifically for like... About four or five hundred dollars. Four or five hundred dollars. There still exists yeah. on reverb and stuff, but yeah. they don't, they're not new anymore. Right. But... Um, you can buy a stock Blues Junior for three fifty to four hundred. Yeah. Used three hundred even if you're lucky. I know someone yeah. who just got one shipped for three hundred. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. A new one is about five thirty nine. So this is a great amp for um for a budget. <laughs> If you're not familiar with tube amps, that might not sound like a lot, uh, but it is really, really loud. And a tube amp, it's very loud. Yeah. At so, a solid state, not so much, but a, and a tube amp, very loud. Yeah, it's it's really loud. If you're one. miking an amp, you don't need all that volume. Um, if you're just putting it on stage uh, and you're playing, like if you're at a rehearsal or something, you could easily play with this with a, with a drummer and yeah. a bass player live without a mic, just listening to it. It's loud enough. And it'll stay clean. Yeah. It's got enough headroom. It does. Um, and it has a master volume. It's got uh, bass, middle, and treble. Um, and a channel, it's like a, it's a single channel, but you got like a channel volume so you can dial in uh, drive or grid. Yeah, and so, yeah that's and then, what gives you your, your headroom too. You want to crank up the yeah. master and keep the volume lower or whatever. Yeah, yeah, all that, depending on how you want to run it. Yeah. So we'll show you some different settings with that. It does have a spring reverb tank in it that mm -hmm. Bradford has disconnected. It wasn't, something was going on with it, right? Yeah, I just, I've, that's like the only thing, and it's not even that it's not reliable. It's just that it was it it broke when I was in my car. So like the cable yeah. just came. It, I was just carrying it, and the cable broke, and it's like an RCA cable. Probably cost me five bucks to fix. I just it haven't would, fixed it. Actually, I just haven't fixed probably it. <laughs> well, you, Bradford also runs a Big Sky by Strymon. Yeah, I don't. So. I don't need. He's that. not lacking in the reverb department. I'm um, overcompensating. One might say. <laughs> so uh, so that's it. It's a really simple, great sounding amp. We're gonna show you some sounds from this amp, and you've been hearing them already. But we're gonna kind of go through the. The knobs here. I'm gonna talk about how we're recording this. You might notice there's no speaker or there's no microphone in front of the speaker. Because the Humboldt is not a current 
you know, production amp, we thought we're just going to take that out of the equation. So the way we're recording this one today, I took the, where you just plug the speaker into the amp, um, I just unplugged it and then ran a cable from that, so the output of the amp, into a Coke load box, which uh, receives the output of a tube amp, and then it allows you to either do, uh, it has cab emulation built in, but it also gives you a line out, uh, and then I've taken that into Logic, and I'm applying IR cabs by Ownhammer. And I have done all kinds of tests where I've mic'd cabs and used those cabs, uh, and those always sound better. Okay, so we want to play uh, a few different kinds of guitars through this. So Bradford has a 335, stock 335 Gibson humbucker pickups. I have a Telecaster that you're going to hear in a little bit, and we're also going to play a Strat, just a... So we'll be everything. standard strat. So we're running through Bradford's pedal board, but none of the pedals are on right now except for uh, some delay. We might add some reverb in post just so it sounds like it's in a room. So here we go. This is basic clean sound. <laughs> Clean Town is not really that clean, but uh, it was in the middle pickup position. Yeah, when it was to the bridge. It drove you, the amp, and that was the amp breaking up. Yeah, that was the amp. No, so. I mean, even if you if you pick, I'm on the bridge now, and if you just dig in lightly, or not dig in, but you play lightly. <laughs> or, I mean, even that isn't dirty, but yeah, add, lay into it. So it sounds good. That's important. That to me, and that's why I, yeah. one of the reasons why I loved. It. I mean, most amps you push them just right, it'll happen. But still, this is yeah, killer. You, right? It's easy, and it's easy to set it that way. Oh like yeah, like it's right on the verge. I read something somewhere that Fender spent a lot of time tweaking and tightening up the overdrive on these, especially the the three, like the Deville three, the Hot Rod three, the Blues Junior three, yeah, like, all those. So like they could be used more like that, more which modern. Is, yeah, more. It's definitely a more modern overdrive top. sound. Yeah, yeah. So that I th I think it's it's tight and really that's a great word for it really tight this is an el84 based amp which is the kind of tubes it uses which is the same kind of tubes vox uses yes now the tubes don't make all the difference in the sound there's every all the components that there's you go a into whole it. bunch of stuff but this sounds more kind of in the middle between like what i would think of fender deluxe kind of classic fender sound and a Vox sound. And okay. I think it's like the best of both worlds, personally. Yeah, and I love it. I mean, like, if you want to use, like, a, you get a chimey sound for, like, a certain day, you dial in the right single coil mm -hmm. guitar with a certain kind of tone, you can kind of hear a chime. Now, it may just be wishful thinking that I'm hearing it, but still, I mean, you and I were messing around earlier, yeah. and we agreed that it could definitely, it's got a sparkle to it. If I mean, it may not be a chime, but it's got a different yeah. sparkle than like a There's different kind of There's good energy amps. in the high end. Yeah. Now, speaking of single coil guitars, let's, let's listen to one. Okay, so I've got a uh, Telecaster here by MJT with Porter Vintage Tele pickups. Mm. So it's just a great sound in Tele. Here's what it sounds like. Uh, we changed the settings on the amp, and you're seeing them here. We added, what, a little bit of mid-range? Turn the treble bit. down and the bass up a little bit. Pretty much. Which is kind of a good rule of thumb if you're going from single coils to like humbuckers. opposite settings. Not always, On your bass and treble. But like, yeah, yeah. Opposite, you pretty much switch their place and it yeah. pretty much works. Yeah, so uh, here we go. Middle pickup position. Okay, so we're going to dial in a little bit of dirt on the amp uh, by just turning the volume up, uh, the channel volume, not the master volume, and then let you hear what it sounds like with uh, these two kind of guitars. <laughs>
So, as you can see, uh, you can set this thing up to be really, like, you get a lot of drive, and you back off the volume, and maybe switch away from your bridge pickup, and it's just, like, really beautiful, clean sound. I didn't touch pedals. Um, that's what this meant. That's what Bradford was saying. I said, I'm not doing anything. No pedaling. Yeah, it was just amp and guitar, and there was no delay on that. It was no, there's delay. A little bit of delay. Um... But I mean, nothing tone shapingly yeah. effective. This is just, it's such a responsive, dynamic amp. Um, I really love it. Mm -hmm. And I really love the way it breaks up. So, um, another thing that this amp is really great for is as a pedal platform. Yeah. So, if you have a large pedal board like Bradford, um, it's like there's a lot of square footage of pedal down here. You can't really see it at the moment, but this thing is huge. It just uh, shows up in videos. It, it's so been around. Seen. Okay, so this is going to serve two purposes. One, we told you we'd play a Strat through this, and we haven't yet, because we almost forgot. So, here's a Strat. Here's a Strat. <laughs> this is a MJT Strat, and has Porter... Are those vintage Strat pickups? Yeah. Porter vintage Strat pickups. And uh, you'll see what the settings are on the amp. So, we'll show it to you. We'll play a little bit clean, and then Bradford will turn some dirt on. What do you, what do you have down here? Uh, lately, I've been favoring that this one's mine, Proto Pearl. It's a nice. touch drive on one side, which is very dynamic, and the other yeah. side is a... Uh, it's funny, because he posted on Instagram that he recognized the sound, and turns out he was messing with a prototype, and huh. it's very horsey sounding. So, it's a two-in-one, which is awesome. So, it's like his Pearl, but it's with two lighter drives. I don't need anything heavy, typically. So Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're going to hear. Yeah. That's just there's yeah. it's very cathartic. Some days you just need that. Yeah. You just need to dig into an amp. Just turn it up loud to let eleven. It punch you in the chest a little bit. Except it feels good. When you're using a load box, it doesn't quite do that. Well you turn the monitors. The monitors right. are still cranked. Yeah. But we're right. saving our ears and our neighbors. That's right. So uh so yeah, it sounds good with pedals. Yes. <laughs> So this is what's interesting about that is I think worship music, this is worship tutorials. So if you're just interested in a blues junior, hopefully we've shown you what it sounds like. But our channel is focused uh, toward worship musicians, churches, that kind of thing. AC30 Vox style amps dominate sort of that sound. They kind of do. If you right. look at what lots of people play, it's like AC30 kind of stuff. Or it's re like or really expensive different versions copies of that, of, yeah. right? Which we would totally play if we had them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think that sound, you, you nailed that sound with a Fender Blues Jr., which is interesting. I don't think a lot of people think you can do that. I think a lot of people have this idea that you have to play a Vox or a Bad Cat or a Matchless or Morgan or Jackson or name your... I would your, totally have one. Name your uh, AC30 variant. Um, and those are great amps, not to take anything away from them. I just think that... Uh, the lowly Fender Blues Jr. It doesn't get as much credit as it deserves. Can pull it off well. I think it goes... I think more often than not... And this is an observation, because I, I, this is why I bought it. Yeah. And I think some people, too, the reason... A lot of times, the reason people buy these is because they're a great price. Yeah. And they can't afford what they think they need to have. Or what they think they 
would love would like their holy grail of tone. Yeah, exactly. And like, I had that. I yeah. mean, for me, this is personal experience, but I bought a matchless, which I've like, if only I could get a matchless. Like that yeah. was my goal for a long time, and then I was like, this is better. Like this is so, what I want. So, so here's a good story. When you bought the matchless, I was like, sweet. I want to hear this thing. I'm excited. Uh, and I did, and it sounded great. But when Bradford told me, he goes, Brian, I'm gonna sell the matchless. And I, I didn't, I don't think I told you this, but I was like, good for Bradford, because he found a sound that he loves. It's like his tone, and uh, I don't, I think a lot of people don't, aren't objective enough with what they hear yeah. to know like the cheaper version is what they prefer. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in many times, it's like if it sounds good, it is good, and if it's if it's like your sound that you like, um, then go for it, man. Yeah. And so the fact that you preferred this tone. To uh to the matchless tone, not to say it's better or worse. It's just I'll I switch. Like it more. I'll switch pedals all day. Uh, yeah. Especially lately, I've really been switching out of guitars, and mainly because I've been trying to upgrade where I was at. So that yeah. kind of find workhorses. A little different story there. I would totally buy a matchless if I could justify keeping a matchless and a blues yeah. junior. But at the time and where I'm at right now, if I have to keep one, I'm gonna pick this, and I sunk the money into another guitar. Actually, the matchless. Paid for this. Did it? Oh, so MJT. that and in part extra, I had a little, whatever. So that's that's more fun. That, that <laughs> and honestly, I mean, on Sunday mornings, people are gonna see the guitars, the amps backstage. Isn't, yeah. that, why, isn't that why we buy gear? So people can see them. So people can see know. it. Probably a lot of people do. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I mean, I would take a handful of amps. Yeah. Sure. But I mean, I've played a lot of different stuff. The agape is great, but it's just not my my flavor personally. You mm -hmm. love it, then that's I love your the flavor. Yeah. And uh, but like for me, I I know sing inside and out, and so I'm I'm glad we finally got to show the world. Yeah, well, it's interesting you mentioned the agape because um, as I played this uh, with Bradford over the past week or so, I've played it a lot. I've heard it a lot, and I've and and today we a beat it with the agape a lot. And the agape, if you watch any of our videos, you'll see it. In a lot of our electric guitar, it's the white agape. Um, it has like this really thick, uh, warm mid range thing. It does. That sounds really good, and I really like it. But this has um, a top end character that the agape doesn't have. And it's like, you know, an amp can't have everything, right? So different amps just have their, their fingerprints, right? And the agape has its sound, and I like that sound. The, the Blues Junior has this sound that you're hearing, and I really like that sound, we put them together, and we played them in stereo for a while. And, uh... Sound awesome. I believe I'm going to be looking for a used Blues Junior. Like, yeah, they, they <laughs> work what, very what well I've, together. It's what I've decided, because they sound awesome oh. together, and they are different, and I really like both of them. Mm -hmm. um, and these are affordable amps in the used market, especially, so... Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to put some stuff for sale and Make look it for a Blues Junior. So... So yeah, new gear uh, day coming soon. Maybe. Um, so yeah, the Blues Junior is just a killer little amp. Yes. All right. So thank you so much for watching, for hanging out with Bradford, and I. Uh, we have certainly enjoyed your company today. We have. We and, felt it. <laughs> and definitely check out the Blues Junior. Uh, please like the video if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel here at WorshipTutorials.com. And go to worshiptutorials.com. Yeah, check that out. There's more, lots of good more resources. Of good, more good stuff there. More there of good stuff there. Many more good many things. Many more of good things. Every of the things. There's a lot of content there at Worship Tutorials. There is. Bradford, you have contributed greatly today and many other days. Well, and contribute it is to and it is eating a, your food. And it is a pleasure to eat. We had pizza earlier today. Delicious. The Godfather. Oh, it's good. <laughs> Not from Godfather, because that's a pizza chain. That's right. But this was a, a, a grocery store sells pizzas down the road that you can put in your oven, and they have the Godfather pizza. Cherry. It's, it's <laughs> choice. <laughs> choice. I like this amp. Yeah. Also choice. Also choice. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Giddy up. <laughs>